Hi, my name is Andrew. Thank you for visiting my YouTube channel. And this video is a focus on Middle East seed capital investors, and it is part of a series of investor profiles for my Middle East database, which is going to be available in 2024. Just a bit of information about myself. I'm a fundraising strategist with 15 years of experience in high-end real estate sales and marketing, spanning Canada, Dubai, and the Caribbean. And over the past two years on Fiverr, I've assisted over 200 clients with startup fundraising, pitch deck refinement, investor outreach strategies, and custom investor databases. In addition, I'm an advisor to a New York-based investment company affiliated with a $60 billion fund. The fund focuses on various sectors, particularly income producing real estate, with capital requirements for projects typically ranging from 10 to $20 million. These projects are selected based on their cash flow and growth potential. If you want more information on my services, you can just click my Fiverr link below. So this guide to Middle East Capital includes the following and it is a unique database I've been working on for quite a while. There's over 150 hours devoted specifically for this database and this video series is going to not only include the basics of the database but it's also going to include uh, company profiles in each one. But to start off with it has 325 companies, it has key contacts, the type of business, the sectors of potential investment interests that they have, it has their websites, the company emails at 274 and key contact emails over 470 and it also is unique because it has key outreach strategy points and that's what makes this database very very unique and you're going to see more of it in Excel spreadsheet format a little bit later on in the video and the database of course will be delivered in Excel spreadsheet format. Starting off some key database statistics there's 185 companies that are based in UAE so just a little more than half of them are UAE based 60 companies are based in Saudi Arabia so about 18% and 125 companies are either venture capital, private equity, or angel investor groups. So that makes up about 40% of it. It's the best database for first time fundraising in the Middle East. This video highlights plus venture capital in the UAE, and they are one of 325 venture capital, private equity, angel groups, and investment companies in my exclusive Middle East fundraising database. Company Snapshot, they're based in the United Arab Emirates and they're classified as an investment company and a venture capital firm. Their focus is on technology, fintech, and venture capital. Company Description, plus venture capital, is an early stage venture capital firm. The firm is focused on investing in tech and tech enabled startups across the MENA region and its diaspora, taking an early leadership role with founders to set them up for success. Company focus, investor approach and strategy. Plus VC, founded in 2010 and based in Dubai, UAE, operates as a venture capital firm with a focus on investing in tech and tech-enabled startups across the MENA region and its diaspora. The firm takes an early leadership role with founders to set them up for success, providing support from the seed stage to Series A. Plus VC's investment approach is driven by experience, unique strategies, and a commitment to build a community with its founders. Investment focus. Plus VC's investment focus lies in the tech and tech-enabled startup space, targeting companies in the MENA region and its diaspora. The firm invests its first check at the seed stage and offers follow-on investments to the best-performing portfolio companies, contributing to the growth and success of innovative ventures. Geographic reach. With its headquarters in Dubai, UAE, Plus VC maintains a strategic focus on the MENA region and its diaspora. The firm's commitment to supporting startups in the local ecosystem is reinforced by its extensive experience, diverse team, and a track record of 180 investments across four MENA countries. And here are some of their previous investments. Potential investment opportunities to approach them with. 
you're going to see in my database, you're going to see the spreadsheet coming up a little bit later here. I've got all 325 firms. And what I've done is I've actually selected three potential targets that you could look at as a starting point to approach these firms with. Now, this does not mean that they're going to invest in them today or tomorrow. But what it means is that based on their website, based on press releases that they have uh, previously released that identify opportunities or uh, item uh, areas that they have looked at, uh, also taking a look at other uh, firms in their uh, sector to see what they've looked at. Uh, uh, given their past investment patterns and existing philosophy, you might want to propose the following investment opportunities to this group. Fintech and healthcare are predominantly uh, shown in their past uh, investments and anything in the technology range. So it's really good to look at if you have a technology startup that you're looking to promote. One of the key benefits of my database is it includes tips for investor outreach and this is what makes it unique. There is no other database like this and I specifically created it for first time fundraisers in the Middle East to help them with this process. Fundraising in the Middle East is completely different than any other country uh, or region for that matter uh, because it's important to build relationships in the Middle East in their firms uh, and not just send your pitch deck or presentations out to chairmen and CEOs and hope that you're going to get results. There is a uh, basic uh, format of how you should approach these type of firms and I'm going to help you out with that but you're going to see it in more detail coming up on the spreadsheet. First of all, you should start at the associate level, investment advisor level, director level, maybe vice president level. Those are, who sh are the people that you should be your main contacts to start off with. Now, it should be noted that my database is full of CEOs, chairmen, and founders. There's hundreds of them. But those are not the people that you should be contacting first. And, and the reason being, again, it's to build that relationship. So. Uh, you should not be sending them your presentation on the first email. So how should you do it? Well, I'm going to show you. Basically, key outreach touch points. If you know who the contact is, now, knowing who it is, it could be on my spreadsheet already. It could be somebody that's listed again as an associate investment advisor or director. Or you could easily uh, send this to the lowest, uh, I guess, category person that you find. And again, I suggest if there's no CEO and chairman, then you're going to go to the next step I have. But if you do know who it is, a key outreach touch point in this case could be plus VC's known support for disruptive startups is commendable. We would like to discuss an initiative we think could be of interest. And again, you're going to have a short entry to it describing uh, who you are as far as your company and then you're going to follow up. This is your middle and then you're going to follow up then. Please get back to me with, with the contact. Now, that's all you're going to send them. And again, if you use this approach, you're going to have success. Now, what if you don't have the contact or what happens if you see that on my database, it's only showing CEO and chairman? Well, the next strategy is you're always, almost always going to have an info ad email. If you don't have an info ad email, you're almost always going to have a contact form. So it works both ways for this. Or I've got hundreds of HR contacts in here. Now, HR contacts are underused when it comes to business development and marketing. And the the reality is they should be your first point of contact. That's who, what their job is. Um, HR contacts are not just there to hire people. They're there to uh, work on policies and uh, structures and the way the company runs a lot of their uh, internal systems. So use them. Now, how would you use them in this case? Uh, you could use a subject heading such as investment avenues with plus VC and then your key initial email approach line may include our initiative resonates with your interests who would be the right individual for a deeper discussion so if I'm the info at or admin person receiving that air email or the HR manager well they're gonna do one of two things they're either gonna send you back a note saying you should contact so-and-so here's their title and here's their email or they're gonna forward your email on to the person that should address it now that's really good news for you because if you work for a company and you've been sent an email from the HR manager, and remember, HR managers are senior people at most companies. Uh, they're very high up on the organizational chart. The odds are that you're going to act on it because you do not want to be the person that's in the investment committee uh, th or as an associate investment advisor or a director uh, that doesn't address this and, th and then somehow their pitch deck gets sent to the chairman and the chairman 
sends it back to someone and says, "Why, why didn't you look at this? Why, you know, you don't, you never want to be in that position." So that's why use the uh, HR managers and use the info at to your advantage. Once you've done that, it's going to change the way that you can uh, effectively fundraise because you want to create a database of key contacts at many levels. You want to explore the focus of their company. You want to understand their internal process of how they deal with deal flow. Now, that's really, really key. When I was working in the Middle East, and this is Dubai specifically, I helped develop our company database. Now, we were working on behalf of ultra high net worth individuals and companies now again those ultra high net worth ones these are people and companies on the buy and the sell side and what that basically means is when they came in and they say listen we're looking to acquire a, a hotel or we'd like to acquire a uh, piece of land for development or we're, we're looking to buy a commercial office tower these are large assets we would be working with them on an exclusive mandate so in other words we would be the ones that then would go out to these investment companies and say instead of sending them the presentations uh, we would find out the process internally because by we're eventually going to get to the ceos and the chairmen. it's it's because that's just the way we are able to structure our outreach we were professional we knew how to do it but we knew to go through the associates the investment advisors and the directors first our typical deals ranged anywhere from $50 million to $250 million. So that means that we had a specific uh, process of how we wanted to market our projects. We also worked on the sell side, and it was the same way. We would have an exclusive mandate on the sell side, and then we would go out to the contacts. Now, in this database, it, there's about 325 companies. Now. The database that I was working on in the Middle East had around 500 or so because it was more uh, corporate related uh, and it did not really include venture capital, uh, private equity guys. It was more larger scale investors across the Middle East. If we had a real estate opportunity, let's say it was $100 million and it was a hotel, we would only send it to people who said in previous emails that they are interested in hospitality businesses and who did we get that from we didn't get it from the ceos and the chairmen we got it from the associates the investment advisors and the directors so that is really key so if you do it this way it's really going to help you because building relationships matters and it's going to really really help you when it comes to fundraising in the middle east this is the type of seed capital and angel group you can find in my exclusive guide to Middle East Capital. I created this exclusive database to help founders reach out to seed and angel investors with confidence. There is no other resource like it, period. And you can also check my ultimate guide to raising startup capital with over 140 pages suitable for people who are doing first time fundraising. That's something else that you can find on my Fiverr profile. So let's take a look at the database. So now we're over on the database section and this is the Excel spreadsheet that includes all the contacts in the Middle East Capital Database. And as you can see on the very top, we've got 325 companies. Uh, we have their country, description of the firm, their main business interests, their websites, and they've all been verified. Uh, and of course, this database will be suitable for all of 2024. I also have included their investment targets, uh, one and two and three. So those are based on information that is publicly known, information that is on their websites of different investments and types of sectors that they will look at. So again, this database is really meant for people who are building a larger data set of Middle East companies to either uh, approach for funding or to possibly promote their products to because there's a blend of venture capital, private equity, family investment offices, and investment companies, and high profile companies in the UAE that are led by UAE National. So it's a really great database for companies that really want to get a very good look at some of the key parties in the Middle East when it comes to raising capital. It also has their investment territory, uh, which includes whether they're just looking at either 
the Middle East or whether they're looking MENA or whether they're looking global. I've also included their key real estate assets. If they're investment companies that tend to look at real estate, I've included those as well in this database. Now, it also has, as far as key touch points, uh, it has their company emails. And in some cases, it's not available because they want you to actually submit your details via their forum. Uh, but I'll get to the key stats a little bit later on. You also saw that in the initial uh, slide presentation. Telephone numbers and contact numbers. There are two what I call primary contacts, and then there's a third, which is the secondary contacts. The key contacts could include CEOs, managing directors, executive directors, and that is the same with the secondary, uh, second contact header. You can see operations manager, directors of real estate, presidents, and so on and so on. And the main reason for that is so that you have a senior contact that you can reach out to. You can also check them on LinkedIn to get more details. Uh, in many cases, their email addresses have already been included, and I'm going to get to that again when we go to the stats page. And the third email contact tends to be somebody in HR. And the reason I've done that is because this database is very unique in the fact that I include outreach approach tips for each of these firms. Uh, there are two types. One is a outreach uh, touch point if you know who the contact is. In other words, if it's been already identified by myself, then you could uh, send them a line that I've included here in all the con companies. Uh, for example, Saudi has a strong track record in urban development in Kuwait. Would you be interested in a new unique investment opportunity that complements your portfolio? And the reason I include these is to help people write their first letters and also to show you that you should not be spamming this type of list with just a generic email approach. Uh, uh, talking about your company and the investment opportunity this allows you to add a little bit of information about them so whoever receives it is going to know that you did a little bit of work and it should not be considered a spam and the second reason here is I've got contact sourcing outreach approach and this is if you do not know who the contact is and this is really key because in some cases you may not have a contact and this is the perfect way for you to introduce yourself for example, in this case, I put subject request for direct contact with investment division. Uh, and then as the body of the, the email I'll make include, I believe you might be the right person to assist me. We're exploring potential investment opportunities that align with Salia's investments vision. Could you direct us to the person or team responsible for evaluating such opportunities? And you can see as I scroll down here, it is included in that type of line. They're all customized, of course. Uh, the same with the ones for the direct contacts that are known. They actually talk about something the company has done, something they've vet invested in, the sectors, uh, or possibly what their company uh, vision is. And this is really going to help you, especially if you're doing first-time fundraising or if you just want to save time when it comes to your research for these type of firms. That's what makes this database unique. Another thing that makes it unique is it really sticks to mainly uh, the type of companies that are either venture capital, private equity, uh, investment companies. Uh, so there's no fluff in here. There's no companies in here that are, should not be in here. And that is the difference between this database and other databases that are out there uh, that talk about investments and reaching out to uh, other investors. For example, there's very little here when it comes to accelerators. There might be a couple of them, but it's not plugged full of what I would call just garbage contacts. These are really key companies that are perfect for reaching out to whether you're raising funds or whether you want to present opportunities, whether it's real estate, investment opportunities, and the like. So let's take a look at some of the stats. So the underlying stats are there's 470 firms, 340 prime contacts, 90 third tier contacts, uh, and 90 email contacts when it comes to the third tier. So you're getting about 400 and a little over 450 uh, emails and the total company emails are 275. So those would be info at, admin at, that sort. So that's a really key overview of the database. Again, this is going to be a series 
where I'm going to highlight each of the contacts. But if you're interested in this particular database, just reach out to me on my Fiverr profile below. My master database includes 400,000 verified global contacts. That includes angel investors, family investment offices, pension funds, hedge funds, private equity databases, REITs, Middle East premium high net worth and ultra high net worth investors database, venture capital lists and investment banks. I also have clients with pitch deck reviews and corporate fundraising presentations. If you're just getting ready to send your presentation out to an investor, send it to me. I have a service on Fiverr where I will review it for you. Approximately 80% of the presentations that I get sent are not suitable to be sent out to investors. For more information on my databases and fundraising services, click my Fiverr link below. Thank you for watching and please like, share and subscribe.